Okay, um, welcome to these videos which are to accompany the main poems we're studying for AQA uh, Power and Conflict Cluster. This is Remains by Simon Armitage. Um, by the end of this hopefully you will know this poem, some good vocabulary to write about it in a sophisticated way and some quotations that are represented by these images um, to talk about. So first of all, what happens in Remains? Well, a group of soldiers shoot a man who's running away from a bank raid he's been involved in. So he's been trying to rob a bank. His death is described in graphic detail when this group of soldiers shoot him. The soldier telling the story isn't sure whether the man was armed or not, and this plays on his mind. He's not sure whether it was okay to shoot someone who was unarmed. And he can't get the man's death out of his head, even when he goes home on leave. He's haunted by it. So here's a brief reading of Remains. On another occasion, we get sent out to tackle looters raiding a bank. And one of them legs it up the road, probably armed, possibly not. Well, myself and somebody else and somebody else are all of the same mind. Uh, so all three of us open fire three of a kind letting fly, and I swear, I see every round as it rips through his life. I see broad daylight on the other side. So we've hit this looter a dozen times, and he's there on the ground, sort of inside out, pain itself, the image of agony, and one of my mates goes by and tosses his guts back into his body. Then he's carted off in the back of a lorry. End of story, except not really. His blood shadow stays on the street, and out on patrol I walk right over it week after week. Then I'm home on leave. But I blink, and he bursts again through the doors of the bank. Sleep, and he's probably armed, possibly not. Dream, and he's torn apart by a dozen rounds. And the drink and the drugs won't flush him out. And he's here in my head when I close my eyes, dug in beneath enemy lines. Not left for dead in some distant, sun-stunned, sand-smothered land, or six feet under in desert sand, but near to the knuckle here and now, his bloody life in my bloody hands. Some key words that you might need to think about when you're talking about this poem include these. So, uncertain or uncertainty, that's not knowing what's happened or what's true. Everything happens so fast in conflict, and in, especially in this one, that um, the person telling the story is uncertain uh, whether this man was armed or not. Graphic violence is a very detailed description of violence, and here it talks about the blood shadow on the street, about tossing his guts back into his body. Those are very graphic, horrific images. The reason why might be that this soldier is desensitised. That describes someone who's become used to something extreme like killing or violent or death. Soldiers often become desensitised to things. But however, later on, this leaves him with psychological scars. That means um, that uh, it, you, it leaves a person with wounds, but in their mind, the effect on, on someone's mind of a very traumatic event. So this person has psychological scars because he's haunted or traumatised by what's happened to him, by the guilt of killing this man. What you might want to do now is to pause this video and write a sentence using each of these words. The first one's been done for you. The soldier was uncertain about whether the man he shot was armed or not. So try and write a sentence each with each of these words and apply it to the poem Remains. When you've done that, we're going to look at some key quotes and we always start with the first line, on another occasion. So this is colloquial or everyday chatty language. It sounds like someone talking to the reader. It's really easy to relate to. Oh yeah, on another occasion we were sent out to tackle a looter. The poem starts like an anecdote, like a sort of short real story. And in fact it is a real story. A story that illustrates the graphic violence of conflict. So it, the poem starts out like this to show you that it is a real story, that this kind of thing really happens. 
It implies that the soldier has had many other horrific stories stories, not just this one, on another occasion he could tell you about a different thing that happened to him. Tosses his guts back into his body. Look at that verb, tosses. That has connotations of carelessness. If, if something's precious to you, you don't toss it around and throw it around. And maybe this illustrates how other soldiers have become desensitised to violence. They don't mind seeing a dead man's guts. It's something they see every day, so they just throw them back in the body. This image is graphic. It's very detailed and disgusting. Guts being outside of a body seems unnatural. And then end of story, comma, except not really. So this is colloquial language. End of story, mate, is something that you might say yourself, but the phrase end of story is very casual, like this isn't important. But the caesura, the pause after end of story, where remember a caesura is a piece of punctuation in the middle of a line of poetry, implies the story is over. End of story. But the story isn't over. This is the volta, the turning point in the poem, the part where the soldier starts to become haunted by what he's done, and he goes home and he can't stop thinking about it. And then, of course, we look at the last line. Why end with his bloody life in my bloody hands? Well, repetition emphasises how he keeps thinking about the killing and he can't stop thinking about it. Bloody um, appears twice. The pronouns his life and my hands show how the victim's life has become part of the soldier's life now that he's, he's killed him. And the bloody hands are a classic image of feeling guilty, caught red-handed. They remind us maybe of Lady Macbeth's bloody hands, which symbolise her guilt in killing King, King Duncan. Most people who've been to school in Britain might, might recognise that idea. So I hope you find those helpful and you can now understand which of these uh, images relate to which quotation. If you're gunning for a higher grade, for a 7, an 8 or a 9, you might want to look at this image. But I blink, and then a, a spare light, and he bursts again through the doors of the bank. So here you've got enjambment, which illustrates the horrible pause where the soldier knows the image of the man will return. He's trying to go to sleep and he knows it's on its way. A bank is somewhere to protect what is most valuable, you know, your money, your, your life savings. Could this bank be a symbol of something, maybe the soldier's identity? This is the weakest, most vulnerable part of him, and this dead man is bursting into it. And the verb bursts has a plosive uh, sound, a p or a b sound is, is a kind of explosive, aggressive sound called a plosive sound. And this shows how violently the victim has intruded on the soldier's identity. The conflict's really affected him. So I hope that's helpful, and uh, please do look at the rest of the videos in this series.